spoke to Putin twice. He called me on the election, I told you this, and he called me on the inauguration a few days ago. We had a very good talk, especially the second one, lasted for a pretty long period of time. I'm sure you probably get it because it was classified, so I'm sure everybody in this room perhaps has it. But we had a very, very good talk. I have nothing to do with Russia. To the best of my knowledge, no person that I deal with does. Now, Manafort has totally denied it. He denied it. Now, people knew that he was a consultant over in that part of the world for a while, but not for Russia. I think he represented Ukraine or people having to do with Ukraine or people that whoever. But people knew that. Everybody knew that. But in his capacity as your campaign manager, was he in touch with Russian officials during have, the election? You know what? He said no. I can only tell you what he... Now, he was replaced long before the election. You know that, right? He was replaced long before the election. When all of this stuff started coming out, it came out during the election. But Paul Manafort, who's a good man also, by the way, Paul Manafort was replaced long before the election took place. He was only there for a short period of time. Okay. <laughs> How much longer should we stay here, folks? Huh? Five more minutes. Is that okay? Five? Wait, let's see. Who's, I want to find a friendly reporter. Used to say it was John. Are you a friendly reporter? Watch how friendly he is. Wait, wait. Watch how friendly he is. Go ahead. I've been good to the entire campaign, Mr. President. Go ahead. So, first of all, my name is Jake Turks from Ami Magazine, and I, despite what some of my colleagues may uh, have been reporting, I haven't seen anybody in my community uh, accuse either yourself or any of the, uh, anyone Thank on you. your staff of being anti-Semitic. Uh, we understand that you have Jewish grandchildren, you are their Zadie. However, what we are concerned about, and what we haven't really uh, heard being addressed is, an uptick in anti-Semitism and how the government is planning to take care of it. There's been a report out that 48 uh, uh, bomb threats have been made against Jewish centers all across the country in the last couple of weeks. There are people who are committing anti-Semitic acts or threatening to... You see, he said he was going to ask a very simple, easy question. And it's not. It's an important question. It's not. Not a, not a simple question. Not a fair question. Okay, sit down. I, I understand the rest of your question. So here's the story, folks. Uh, number one, I am the least anti-Semitic person that you've ever seen in your entire life. Number two, racism. The least racist person. In fact, we did very well relative to other people running as a Republican. Quiet, quiet, quiet. See, he lied about, he was going to get up and ask a very straight, simple question. So, you know, it's welcome to the world of the media. But let me just tell you something that um, I hate the charge. I find it repulsive. I hate even the question because people that know me, and you heard the Prime Minister, you heard uh, Netanyahu yesterday. Did you hear him? Bibi. He said, I've known Donald Trump for a long time. And then he said, forget it. So you should take that instead of having to get up and ask a, a very insulting question like that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm Lisa from the PBS. See, it just shows you about the press, but that's the way the press is. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Good. Lisa Desjardins from the PBS NewsHour. Good. On national security and immigration, can you give us more details on the executive order you plan for next week, even its broad outlines? Yeah. Will it be focused on specific very fair countries? Question. And in addition, on the DACA program for immigration, right. what is your plan? Do you plan to continue that program or to end it? We're going to show great heart. DACA is a very, very difficult subject for me, I will tell you. To me, it's one of the most difficult subjects I have because you have these incredible kids, in many cases, not in all cases. In some of the cases, they're having DACA and they're gang members and they're drug dealers, too. But you have some absolutely incredible kids, I would say mostly. They were brought here in such a way, it's a very, it's a very, very tough subject. We are going to deal with DACA with heart. I have to deal with a lot of politicians, don't forget. And I have to convince them that what I'm saying is, is right. And I appreciate your understanding on that. But the DACA situation is a very, very, it's a very difficult thing for me. Because, you know, I love these kids. I, I love kids. I have kids and grandkids. And I find it very, very hard doing what the law says exactly to do. And, you know, the law is rough. I'm not talking about new laws. I'm talking the existing law is very rough. It's very, very rough. As far as the new order, 
uh, the new order is going to be very much tailored to the what I consider to be a very bad decision, but uh, we can tailor the order to that decision and get just about everything, in some ways more, uh, but we're tailoring it now to the decision. We have some of the best lawyers in the country working on it. And the new uh, executive order is being tailored to the decision we got down from the court. Okay? White House Visitor's Office. Yes. And she does a lot of great work for the country as well. Can you talk a little bit about what First Lady Melania Trump does for the country? And there's a unique level of interest in your administration. So by opening the White House Visitor, Visitor's Office, what does that mean to you and the rest of the Now country? that's what I call a nice question. That is very nice. Who are you with? UNF News. It's an independent. Good, I'm going to start watching. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Melania is terrific. She was here last night. We had dinner with Senator Rubio and his wife, who is, by the way, lovely. And we had a really good discussion about Cuba, because we have very similar views on Cuba. And Cuba was very good to me in the Florida election, as you know, the Cuban people, Americans. Uh, and I think that uh, Melania is going to be outstanding. That's right. She just opened up the visitor center, in other words, touring of the White House. She, like... Uh, Others that she's working with feel very, very strongly about uh, women's issues, women's difficulties, very, very strongly. And she's a very, very strong advocate. I think she's a great representative for this country. And a funny thing happens because she gets, she gets so unfairly maligned. The things they say, I've known her for a long time. She was a very successful person. She was a very successful model. She did really well. She would go home at night and didn't even want to go out with people. She was a very private person. She was always the highest quality that you'll ever find. And the things they say, and I've known her for a long time, the things they say are so unfair. And actually, she's been apologized to, as you know, by various media, because they said things that were lies. I just tell you this, I think she's going to be a fantastic first lady. She's going to be a tremendous representative of women and of the people. And helping her and working her will be Ivanka, who is a fabulous person and a fabulous, fabulous woman. And they're not doing this for money. They're not doing this for pay. They're doing this because they feel it, both of them. And uh, Melania goes back and forth. And after Barron finishes school, because it's hard to take a child out of school with a few months left, uh, she and Barron will be moving over to the White House. Okay? Thank you. It's a very nice question. Go ahead. Yes. I, oh, this is going to be a bad question, but that's okay. Because I enjoy watching you on television. Go ahead. Well, thank you so much. Mr. President, I need to find out from you. Uh, you said something uh, as it relates to inner cities. That was one of your platforms during your campaign. Now fix the president. inner cities. Yeah. Fixing the inner yep. cities. What will be that fix and your urban agenda as well as your HBCU uh, executive order that's coming out this afternoon? Now, see, it wasn't bad, was it? That was very professional and very good. Yeah, very we'll, we'll be announcing yes. the order in a little while, and I'd rather let the order speak for itself, but it'll be something, I think, that will be very good for everybody concerned. But we'll talk to you about that after we do the announcement. As far as the inner cities, as you know, I was very strong on the inner cities during the campaign. I think it's probably what got me a much higher percentage of the African-American vote than a lot of people thought I was going to get. Uh, we did, you know, much higher than people thought I was going to get, and I was honored by that, including the Hispanic vote, which was also much higher. And, by the way, if I might add, including the women's vote, which was much higher than people thought I was going to get. So uh, we are going to be uh, working very hard on the inner cities having to do with education, having to do with crime. We're going to try and fix as quickly as possible. You know, it takes a long time. It's taken 100 years and more for some of these places to evolve, and they evolved, many of them, very badly. But we're going to be working very hard on health and health care, very, very hard on education, and also we're going to be working in a stringent way and a very good way on crime. You go to some of these inner city uh, places, and it's so sad when you look at the crime. You have people, and I've seen this, and I've sort of witnessed it. In fact, in two cases, I have actually witnessed it. They lock themselves into apartments, petrified to even leave in the middle of the day. 
They're living in hell. We can't let that happen. So we're going to be very, very strong. It's a great question, and, and, and a, it's, a very, it's a very difficult situation because it's been many, many years. It's been festering for many, many years. But we have places in this country that we have to fix. We have to help African-American people that, for the most part, are stuck there, Hispanic American people. We have Hispanic American people that are in the inner cities, and they're living in hell. I mean, you look at the numbers in Chicago. There are two Chicagos, as you know. There's one Chicago that's credible, luxurious, and all, and safe. There's another Chicago that's worse than almost any of the places in the Middle East that we talk about and that you talk about every night on the newscasts. So we're going to do a lot of work on the inner cities. I have great people lined up to help with the inner cities. Well, when, okay? you say, when you say the inner cities, are you, going to, are you going to include the CBC, Mr. President, in your conversations with your, your urban agenda, your inner city agenda, as well as... Am your, I going to include Are who? you going to include the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Well, Hispanic I would. Caucus, I tell you what. Do you want to well set up the, the meeting? Do you want to set up the meeting? No, no, no. I'm, are they I'm, friends I'm, of I'm yours? No, get a, set up the I meeting. I know some of them, but I'm sure Let's they're Let's go set up right a meeting. I would love to meet with the Black Caucus. I think it's great, the Congressional Black Caucus. I think it's great. Uh, I actually thought I had a meeting with Congressman Cummings, mm -hmm. and he was all excited. And then he said, oh, I can't move. It might be bad for me politically. I can't have that meeting. I was all set to have the meeting. You know, we called him and called him, and he was all set. I spoke to him on the phone. Very nice guy. I hear he wanted that meeting with you as well. He wanted it, but we called, 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 called. They can't make a meeting with him. Every day I walk in, I said, I would like to meet with him, because I do want to solve the problem. But he probably was told by Schumer, or somebody like that, some other lightweight, he was probably told, he was probably told, don't meet with Trump. It's bad politics. And that's part of the problem in this country. Okay, one more. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, one question. Two we can't handle. This room can't handle two. Go ahead. Give me the better of your two. I'll follow up on my colleague's question about anti-Semitism. It's not about your personality or your beliefs. We're talking about a rise in anti-Semitism around the country, <laughs> some of it by supporters in your name. What can you and, do and to some of it, that? And can I be honest with you? And this has to do with racism and horrible things that are put up. Some of it written by our opponents. You do know that. Do you understand that? You don't think anybody would do a thing like that. Some of the signs you'll see are not put up by the people that love or like Donald Trump. They're put up by the other side. And you think it's like playing it straight? No. But you have some of those signs and some of that anger is caused by the other side. They'll do signs and they'll do drawings that are inappropriate. It won't be my people. It will be the people on the other side to anger people like you. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you going to do about it? Who is that? Where is that? Oh, you stand up. You can... What are you going to do about the tension? Oh, I'm working on it. No, I'm working on it very hard. No, no. Look, hey, just so you understand, we had a totally divided country for eight years and long before that, in all fairness to President Obama, long before President Obama, we have had a very divided... I didn't come along and divide this country. This country was seriously divided before I got here. We're going to work on it very hard. One of the questions that was asked, I thought it was a very good question, was about the inner cities. I mean, that's part of it. Uh, but we're going to work on education. We're going to work on lack, you know, we're going to stop. We're going to try and stop the crime. We have great law enforcement officials. We're going to try and stop crime. We're not going to try and stop. We're going to stop crime. But it's very important to me. But this isn't Donald Trump that divided a nation. We went eight years with President Obama, and we went many years before President Obama. We lived in a divided nation. And I am going to try. I will do everything within my power to fix that. I want to thank everybody very much. It's a great honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.